If you are a grade 12 CAT student, then this is the video for you because we are going through the PRAC exam or the paper one for the computer application technology for November 2023. And this is a very important video because we're going through the fifth question, which is the access database question, which is a tricky question for a lot of students. So let's see how we can do the 2023 November papers question for databases. So here we have the questions, question five, and they've asked us to open up the five shuttle database, which I've got over here. So the first question tends to be about table. So 5.1 will deal with the table. So we deal with table five underscore one. So let's go have a look at it. So there we are, we've got it open. I'm gonna enable content so that we can make changes to it. And there is the table that we're gonna be working with. So I'm gonna open it up quickly and let's go look at the first question. So it asks us to change the properties of the name field to make sure that the name is always entered. So that's going to do with the properties. So we're gonna come here to design view and we are dealing with the name field so make sure that you're on the right field so we deal with the name field and we want to make sure that they are always entered in other words they cannot be left a blank which means the required part of it needs to be made a yes so that's what they mean by you must always fill it in it's required 5.1.2 edit the properties of the start date to display in that format first dd dash three m's dash yy so let's go to start date first thing you'll notice is that it says short text which is not what we want we want that to be a date so we're going to make that into a date and time which allows us access to different date formats so if we look over here we want two letters for the day, three for the month, and two for the year. And if you look at medium date, that is exactly what we want. Two for the day, three for the month, which will make it into the three letter code, and then two for the year. So that's exactly what we want. So we'll click on that one as our date. So when you come back here to view, let's save. Yes, you'll see that the start date is in that format. You could have also just typed in the format that you want like that, and that would have also been accepted. Either one would have been correct. So let's look at 5.1.3. The driver's license number must be entered in a specific format. Change the properties of license so that the user will be entered as follows. So this has got to do with an input mask. We want six compulsory numbers followed by three capital letters followed by one optional number. Now, if you've remembered right at the bottom of the question paper is an input mask character sheet. This can be used to help guide you. So they wanted six compulsory numbers. So that's a digit that entry is required. And that was a compulsory. So that's the zero. So we want six zeros. Then we want three letters that are compulsory. So we're going to use the L because those are letters that are required. And then one optional digit. So there's a digit that is not required. It could be left blank. So we're going to use the nine. But just a reminder that it said capital letters. Now, if you scroll down, we need to use the greater than symbol to make sure that the characters are in uppercase. So remember to use this at the bottom on the last few pages of your exam paper to help you with your input mask. So let's go six compulsory numbers, three capital letters, one optional number. So we're going to come here to license number and we're going to put an input mask and we want six compulsory digits. So we've got six zeros followed by three compulsory letters followed by an optional digit, which would be a nine at the end. But remember, these letters must be capital. So we're going to put a greater than symbol in front of them. Make sure that they are uppercase. You could have put the uppercase in the front, but that's technically where you want it to start. So let's go back. Say yes. And you can see that the letters are all in capitals and that's all following in that format. 5.1.3, change the properties of the rating field so that it only accepts ratings from one to five. No default value should appear in this field. So there's two things that we want to check that the rate fields only accepts one to five. So let's come over here. So ratings. So at the moment there is a default value. So we're going to take that default value away and we are going to put in a validation rule here to make sure that they only type in a one to five. So we want it to be, you can, now there's lots of ways to do this. You can say between one and five, that would be acceptable. You could also say that it must be greater than equal to one and at the same time, less than equal to five. Or you, because there's so few of them, you could have gone one or two or three or but that's probably the way I would have done it is the greater than one, less than equal to five. That is the rule. They don't mention anything about a message that appears if they violate the rule. So that means we don't need to put in the validation text. So remember the rule is what we accept. The text is what will be displayed if we violate that rule. So if we come over here, 
and you see we go and we type in a seven instead of a five and click away it says there's a problem we are violating that rule so we must go away from that go back to its original value of five and then 5.1.5 insert a new field called license card above the license number and insert a five card image in the data shoot field for Mark Lopez okay so they're telling us that this is going to be some sort of image field which means we need to make it some sort of OLE object so we want to insert a new field above license number so we're going to come over here to license number and we're going to right click there and insert a row above license number and we want that one to be license card now because we are inserting a image that means that the top must be an OLE object you could have technically done attachment as well but OLE object is probably the best so that's my field over there so say yes so yeah we got our license card and then they ask us to insert the five card image for driver Mark Lopez so when we come to Mark Lopez come here to this file over here when we can right click on it and insert an object and we don't want to create a new file we want to go fetch a file so we're going to create a file let's go browse for it as you can see there is the five card jpeg we're going to click on that one and click ok now they don't mention anything about it being a link or displayed as an icon if they did you would just click on those properties but we're just going to link that go ok and there you can see that it's been added if you want to test it you can always just right click on the object and go to the packages shell object and you can activate the contents and then the image will pop up in your default image program so there you can see that it is attached okay so there we go i think we've done that question so that's 5.1 which is the tables question so let's move on to 5.2 which is to do with form so before we do that let's make sure that we save everything and we close this table now let's go do 5.2 open up the frm five underscore two based on the pre bookings table in design view and edit so let's go we're going to right click on the form underscore two that's the one there click on it and then let's go straight to design view so they want us to do the following they want to insert the five bus image in the form header as a logo so for this we're going to use the logo option over there so let's click on the logo option and it's going to ask us for which one do we want and we wanted the five bus if you remember correctly that's the option that we want we're going to click ok and so it's already put the logo in the heading so there you can see it's added as a logo it's basically a special type of image it's pretty similar to an image but there we go we can see that it's added as a logo you can see over here when we click on it that it's called a logo then they want us to change the properties of the reason field to a combo box to display the options business and personal so let's go to reason so there is the reason and we want to change that to a combo box i'm going to right click on it and change it to a combo box so now when we go to design view you'll notice that it doesn't have any options available so let's go back to the design view and so when we click on it we need to look at the data so let's click on it let's go to the data and you can see the raw source where is it getting the information from so, so at the moment it's trying to get the data from a table query we don't want to do that we're going to click on here and say we must get it from a value list so we can type in our values then over here in the raw source so we can type in our options like you could type in business and personal in double quotes but you can also click on the ellipse now that it's a value list we can click on the ellipse and there you can actually type in your options so we want business to be one and we want personal to be the other and if i click ok you'll see that it puts it in double quotes with a semicolon between so you could have either done that manually by typing exactly like it is or you can just use the ellipse but remember you must first change it to a value list so now when i go to the form view when i click over here you can see that we've got those two options available so that's what they want for that question and that's all of it for the form so we make sure that you save and now we can close our form 5.3 we want to create a query called query 5 and so 3 based on pre bookings as the following display only the name surname and contact number of the following clients we want business clients who travel more than 30 kilometers or any clients who travel 10 kilometers or less so they're two different groupings of people because obviously the business clients we don't want the business clients who travel 10 kilometers or less we want only business clients who travel 30 kilometers or more but we want anyone else who gets less than 10 kilometers including 10 so let's go look at our query so we're going to come here to our create and we're going to create a query using query design and we want to be based off of pre-booking so i'm going to double click on pre-booking so there it is let's close that and so what fields do we want to display we want to display name surname contact number so we want name surname and contact number we also need to find out what reason for the client's travel so we're going to include 
So let's also include reason and we need the kilometers that they've traveled. So those are the options. Now I know we can see all of them. If I run it, we can see all of them, but we'll hide those two once we've got our query working. So let's go back to design view. So what do we want? So we've got our fields, but we want business clients who travel more than 30 kilometers. So let's go. So we, our reason must be business and it must be now be careful must be more than 30 not including 30 so if we run it we want that to be more than 30 so we're going to say greater than 30 kilometers and we run the query so there are all the business people that traveled more than 30 kilometers so that's one option the other option is that it's any client who traveled 10 or less. Now the problem is I can't go greater than 30 or less than equal to 10 because this means it's going to look for business bookings of greater than 30 or business bookings that are less than 10. You'll look over here that we do get some options that are less than 10 but those are only the business ones so we can't do that part here. So I'm going to use a brand new line of all here. Here is where we want any type of reason but it must be less than equal to 10 now remember it's less than equal to because it is 10 or less so we want business greater than 30 but anyone else must be less than 10 so let's run that and there you can see that there are some that are less than 10 and that doesn't matter if it's business or personal but there are only business ones that are more than 30 and there are 19 records in total so we're going to save this as qry5 underscore three because that's the name that they want and we click OK and oh before we do that we must remember they only wanted to display those fields so although we display in everything don't forget we must deselect these two so that we just display the contact number so we just have those fields being displayed okay so there we go so that's all the marks make sure we save it and then we can close it Point four, open the query. So we have a query that's based on pre-bookings in design view. So let's go double click on it and let's go to design view. And they want us to modify the query to display the clients who use the shuttle services to depart in December. So let's go look. So at the moment, there's no detail. So let's run it and see what it looks like. So we want only those that use the shuttle service to depart in December. I'm assuming all of the clients are using shuttle services, but we're looking particularly at those that depart in December. So how do we find that? So we need to find out all the depart people that are in December. Now, there are lots of ways of doing that. So we want, for example, for the depart date, we could create a new field, like a calculator field, and we can say equals the month of the depart date. So let's make that a bit bigger there quickly. So equals the month of the depart date. Now, if I run that, you'll notice that in this column, we've got the number that's just the month there. Do you see that? So we've extracted just the month. And then what's nice now is I can come underneath as a criteria and say we want that just to be 12 because we only want those that departed in December. So we can do that and then we can just add those. But I'm just running to see. So there's only the ones in December and they're only nine records. So that's one way of doing it. So we can do that and just hide that field. So that's one way of doing it. Another way is to look at the depart date by using star slash 12 slash star. In other words, we don't care what the year is. We don't care what the, the day is. But as long as there's a slash 12 slash in the middle, it'll say like, it'll put the like in. And that will also give us just the one where December is in the middle. So those are the two possible ways I would have done it. If it's only to do with one here, then you could obviously do a calculation that just finds out that it's greater than the 1st of December and less than the 31st, including those dates. You could also do that if it's between those dates. But those are the two ways I would have done it. We either use the month of the depart date or you could use the star slash 12 slash star. So we don't care what the year is. We don't care what the day is. As long as there's a 12 in the middle, we're happy with that. So there is our options. So we're going to save that. And I think that'll be good enough for our marks there. Let's move on to 5.5. .5. Open up the five query based on the pre-bookings. So we're going to go here to five, open it up, and we're going to go to design view. We want to insert a new field called total to calculate the total travel cost for the client for a return trip. The charge is 6.25 per kilometer traveled. So we want the field to be called total. We want it to work out the return trip cost, which is 6.2 per kilometer traveled. So we're going to come here. And as I showed you previously, whenever you're doing calculated fields, I always start with an equal to sign. And we want to say equal to sign 6.25 times it by 
the kilometers traveled, that field. So we can, in square brackets, type in km travel to get that. So we want to find the calc the total cost for the client, which is charged at 2.63 per kilometer traveled. Now, that's going to give us an answer. That's going to give us, there we go. Now, we don't like that EXPR. So I'm going to come over here and change that EXPR to the word total, because that's what they want. We call total. So I'm going to type in total over there. So that's already looking a lot better. Whenever they underline something, there's normally a reason for that. Why did they underline return? So if this is the kilometers traveled for the trip, I don't think that means that it's for them coming back. So if we're talking for a client for a return trip, that means they travel that distance twice because they go there and then they travel back. So the reason why that's underlined is I think there's an element to that that we need to add. So I'm going to come over here and say, well, our calculation is actually correct for one trip, but to do that twice, we must multiply that answer by two. And that will be then cost for the total for the return trip. They don't mention anything about formatting as a currency, but you could do that. But that is what we are going to do. I'm going to leave it as that. So look there, so you put an equal to sign, then you put in your formula. Remember when you're referring to fields, put them in square brackets. And once you've gone and viewed it, you can then go back and change that EXPR to whatever name you want it to be. Now, one more question to do. Let's go to 5.6, which is the report. We're going to open up the report. So let's first save this. And then let's go to the report. We're going to go open up our report and go to design view and let's see what they want. And so they want us to insert a function in the group footer to indicate the total clients per reason. So over here, we've got a reason header, but they want it in the group footer. And at the moment, we just have a reason header. We don't have a reason footer. So if I come here to group sort, we're going to click on that to give us all the options. There's our group by reason. And at the moment, it says more when I click on more it says with a header but it says without a footer so I'm going to first make sure that I've got a footer so there's my reason footer and we're going to insert our function in here if you can't get to the reason footer just do the formula in the reason header you'll lose the mark for the footer part but at least you'll get the marks for the other parts of it so we want to indicate the total number of clients per reason so if we look at the view we want to count how many people are business how many people are personal so to do that we are counting the field so we're going to insert in a field here so we want a text box so i'm going to click on the text box put it in the reason footer and that'll give me a label and a formula we're going to say equals count star because we count in fields doesn't matter which one we count we just count your stars and i'm going to give it a nice little heading here call it total by reason so if we go view it you can see there's business and there are 12 in business and if i come down here there are 23 in personal let's go back to design view so that's the function change the orientation to landscape so if we come here let's go look what other options are well that might be with a page setup so let's look there and there it's portrait so let's make it landscape so now it's landscape and then they want us to export the report as a pdf document called five pre-bookings to our folder to our exam folder so make sure we put it in the right folder so we want to export it so if we come here to the design we can actually go view it if we want to happy with our view we can come here to external data and we can then export it to a pdf over here you can also right click on it and export it over there to a pdf both of those options would work so let's go export it there so here we're in our exam folder make sure that you are in your exam folder when you export it because you want to make sure that every, all the files are in the same folder so we want to change its name to five pre dash bookings was the name that they wanted so we're going to go publish so it says it was done successfully so we're going to close so if I come to my folder, you can see now there is a document which has been created, which wasn't there before. And there we go. You can see that the document is landscape and you can see our formulas over there. So everything is there. So that's what it looks like. So there we go. So there we go. I think it's done. So we're going to come here, make sure that we save, close, and we are then completed with the access question. So now we move on to question six. Don't forget that there are links in the video description for the data files so that you can practice ahead of time, as well as links to the other videos that can help you with your CAT exam. Don't forget to follow us on TikTok as well as our other channel at Mr. Long Computer Terms. And remember, don't do the long way, do the Mr. Long way.